broad pronouncements from the carriers yesterday about the improvement of their networks on the back of these new 5G iPhones. But how much has the network actually improved between yesterday and today? Look, it's a, it's a continuous improvement. I think the networks are been uh, adding capacity and coverage to 5G. In the United States, you see activity, you know, across all the three networks. And uh, globally, it's uh, incredible. We, we have right now uh, a large number of uh, operators with 5G. There's 90 operators in, in uh, more than 40 countries. There are 300 other operators uh, working on 5G. And I think... The good thing about having, I, you know, I saw a great interview with, uh, uh, you know, Mike Sievers. Great thing about having a complete portfolio of devices now, including now uh, iPhones for the for the iOS community with 5G. We're just going to continue to see an acceleration and 5G getting more and more scale. And with that, the networks are going to be uh, more fully deployed and they're going to have more coverage and more capacity. Now, let's take Verizon, for example. Their 5G has, to this point, only been available in select parts of 36 cities. There's rapid drop-offs in signal um, when 5G is available. So to Mike Sievert's question for you, what is your outlook on when the infrastructure, the hardware, and everything will truly be ready? Like, when will we truly have nationwide 5G by the way, before I answer your question, Emily, I love getting this question. I really do. In the past, and I remember going back to 3G and 4G, it was always about what do I do with this technology? Now the question is, why am I not getting it? Why is not 5G right here? That's incredible. And it shows how mature I think the mobile market is and the, and the need for 5G. Look, the way to think about this, and I think often there's some confusion in the industry. The way to think about this is every single spectrum that we have today will be used utilized for 5G, and you're going to get new bands like the mid band. I think Mike Sievers talked about their 2.5 band, and you're going to get millimeter wave like the Verizon ultra wide band. And at the end of the day, all of those bands are going to be at play and likely going to be deployed across all operators. I think Verizon started with an ultra wide band, and that requires the network to be more dense but also provides incredible capacity and performance. And the ultra wide band that Verizon deploys using a millimeter wave, it's going to be part of all carriers in the United States. I think no exceptions. And it's going to get, there's 125 carriers now in the globe working on millimeter wave. At the same time, uh, uh, Verizon using dynamic spectrum sharing will convert their existing spectrum holdings to 5G and continue to add more spectrum that's become available. So I, I think the, to think about 5G as uh, you're going to have uh, every single spectrum you have today in the 4G networks over time, that's going to be also providing 5G service, and you're going to get the new bands. And as operators go through this process, uh, you started to see coverage and capacity being deployed in different uh, municipalities you know, over time. To answer your question, it's fair to assume that uh, by 2021, by the end of 2021, I think 5G is fairly deployed in all metropolitan areas, uh, including a uh, significant expansion of uh, millimeter wave, or in the case of Verizon, the ultra wideband uh, 5G. And it's uh, looking into 2022, uh, that's technology is going to be uh, deployed globally. One of the interesting conversations, we all wanted to see the Olympics back. And, uh, you know, even China is talking about millimeter wave for the uh, Winter Olympics of 2022. And, uh, and I think that's, uh, that's a very aggressive timeline uh, for, for deployment and is moving faster than what 4G did. Now, Qualcomm shares have been on a tear over the last couple of years, and it's crazy to think that Broadcom once upon a time offered $17 a share, now they're at $129. But what does the coming of 5G mean for Qualcomm? You know, you guys have been touting the coming of 5G for years. Um, now it is almost finally here, and the company certainly stands to benefit. Yeah, we're incredibly proud of this company, and uh, you know, in you know, of course, we're going to say this. We were right, and uh, and five G is good for Qualcomm, and uh, and it's probably uh, the market is started to understand what we had said, you know, probably a couple of years ago. 
the best years of Qualcomm is still ahead of us because unlike the other transitions of technology, what 5G is doing for Qualcomm is actually enable an expansion of our business outside the mobile uh, sector into a lot of other industries. Uh, we're growing substantially in the automotive uh, with the whole transformation of the connected car. We're growing into uh, industrial with, uh, in, with Internet of Things. And... Um, we're going to expand into uh, networking with the with private networks. So we have a lot of growth opportunities for Qualcomm, and we're just at the beginning of this 5G curve. Now, you have been gathering a ton of data about the economic impact of 5G. There's this number that it'll create 20-some million additional new jobs. Just what do you think the impact of 5G will be, and how has that impact changed in the midst of this pandemic? Uh, very, very good question. Look, the, the, when, when you think of future of, uh, you know, economic growth in general, a big component of that growth is the digital economy. And that's true, I think, for all countries. And I think all developed economies really understand this, given the emphasis on deploying 5G. 5G is the fundamental ingredient to the digital economy, especially because in simple terms, is a technology that connects everything to the cloud 100% of the time, and you really leverage the capabilities of the cloud. And even with the pandemic, that did have an effect at reducing, I think, the size of uh, the market, and uh, and you saw some uh, GDP impact. The number is still substantial. Uh, the the revised number of uh, the global, you know, economic output. Uh, enabled by 5G, by 2035 is 13.1 trillion, uh, and that's a significant number. And it, it kind of demonstrates the impact of 5G in 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 the digital transformation of many enterprises. And it's uh, no question it creates a more resilient economy, especially if we look at the role of connectivity and everything that we've been through.